welcome back to another episode of Sailing Windrose. What are your feet doing there? Well, I'm looking at the next problem. Oh. So, let me take you along. This is the hydraulic pump that operates the dagger board. And it leaks. Because if I use it, and if I pump there, that, in Dutch we say kering, pops out. And now comes the fun part, boys and girls. This is what having a boat means. You sail with it, you break something. You break it, you need to fix it. And if it's the first time, you sometimes have a clue and you sometimes don't. And in this particular case, I have a clue because what if I could just get this thing out, which seems to be locked in place on the bottom side. So I guess popping this off should do the trick. But then the question is, will it come off? And that is the difference between a five minute job and a couple of days job. Because if not, I have to replace the whole bloody thing. And if it would come off, it is just that one. So, welcome back to another episode. Let's get started because the first thing on the list is projects for the boat. And actually don't know what, but I'll probably be able to tell it myself. So from my neighbor Jacco from Colibri Remy, I actually got this master volt switch mode scene inverter. Um, it's the 12 volt 350 version, which I think is 350 watt at 12 volts, but that's a guess. And with the new reality, I think being a bit more digital nomad and thus being able to sail and work from more locations will come in handy. But uh, as I had before, you do need to be able to charge your laptop as a digital nomad. And this plug looks perfectly fine for that. So what I'm now going to do is check the charger of the Apple charger to see how much current it pulls, but uh, yeah, curious to see if this works. As with any good device, Apple puts on the device what the power consumption is. So if you are very young and hip, you can read it, or you just need to take some reading glasses. And then you can read, in this case, it takes 61 watts. Uh, and now the big question is, how much energy will it take to charge my laptop? So that I'm going to measure uh, with the smart chain that I have. Everything is wired up already. So uh, I fused it with what was recommended, 25 amps. Um, gonna install it away from the batteries because apparently you're not allowed to get gases uh, uh, from the batteries. Uh, close to it so the only thing I need to do now is plug in my laptop and then obviously I need to install it but uh, first I want to well, sort of dry run it to make sure that I'm not um, to make sure that I'm not uh, to make sure that I'm not uh, ah, installing the box if it isn't working I think that was a very interesting experiment. So as far as I can see, I've been sitting roughly well, six, seven minutes. I'll check out the footage. Uh, with the charger on, it draws up to six amps, then goes back to three and a half amps. And that I kind of recognize from the fridge. I'm gonna try that, put the fridge on and see how much amps that draws. Uh, but this actually means that I can work from the boat because I know I can have the fridge on 
full time basically when sailing uh, and then with the solar panels up I kind of break even on uh, on energy consumption so uh, the fridge actually is a big user of, of energy uh, so would I uh, not use that then at least I can use the uh, uh, the laptop charger so I don't think I can use both um, which is a good conclusion uh, because it's not sustainable in the long run but for now at least if I would want to work I could so uh, so it's installed it has the fuse box at an accessible place the thing itself is like super inaccessible but this winter I think I'm gonna rip out all the wiring because it's a total mess so I wouldn't say it's a total mess I would just say it is how it grew um, but still it is for me hard to get it so if I have the opportunity next season I think I will get it out because electricity is one of the things that go not really hand in hand with an aluminum hull uh, and I prefer to have it done neatly uh, by just reorganizing it having that said um, working on the boat knowing it's going to be solo also gives you room to think things over and i do that best when walking with the dog Let's not get all melodramatical on this. Uh, it's good to take some time to think things over, but it's also good to just do the things that you have to do. And one of the things if you put the boat to winter sleep is get the sails off and put them for drying. We're back in the office again. Kind of taking over the space. Probably gonna get some comments on this. But due to COVID, there's nobody there. It's nice and warm. It's dry. So that's good for sales. Easy fix. Uh, and this is one in a couple of easy fixes because I also had a leaky port light. You actually see here the paint come, came off. Here the paint came off. And here it's actually quite wet. So oh, currently we have the heater on to kind of dry it. But I was wondering, like, why is it leaking? And it seems to leak right through the handle here. So uh, I opened one of these handles up and it showed the rubber gasket is broken. And that means water can just come in. So I bought a 100 gazillion rubber box with new rubbers so i'm gonna replace them because i've already replaced the first one and that works like a charm yay and by the way um igor your vera screwdriver with flexible bit thus being able to do all these things with one thing is working like a charm perfect so in case you wonder how it works, the first step is just to get this screw out and you actually here can see the water. There you go. Come in. So it's to get that screw out. This one doesn't need a lot of explanation. It's 
screws out and then the whole handle just comes off looking at this you can actually see the water in there so So I just replaced the rubber and I put some white teff lubricant on it. All purpose lubricant, favor on metal painted and plastic surfaces, snaps, zippers, etc. Impervious to salt and fresh water, excellent adhesion, non toxic, virtue eliminates friction. And the good news is, it's minus 65 Fahrenheit and plus 650 Fahrenheit. Well, I don't know when it's going to be that hot, but I'm joking. So, uh, rubber is in, just putting it back together. This is the easiest fix ever, I think. Well, up till now, so obviously something can go wrong, but for now it's quite good. So, got it back together again. The only thing I need to do is put the screw in. So, two done. Let's do the other two. Just get the screw out. And now they're back in. Nice and tight. I think that is important because of the rubber. Works like a charm. Easy fix, but rather important because I now have a dry bed again, which is good because if you go to bed and there is a wet spot in it, it's not that good. Water in that sense can be quite intrusive and the same goes if you've had somebody make you an amazing wind vane blade. You kind of need to protect it from the elements. In uh, Dutch we have a saying, it's called the dood of the haladiole and it basically means all or nothing. So my good friend Erwin, famous lefty, made this amazing piece of art for me. Something to uh, enjoy. But I need to put some coat on it. Some uh, call of a finish, lock, whatever. Um, oh. And <laughs> I just hope that when I apply this, it will not run on me. So let's see. So let's just start a piece of white and see how this goes. Okay. It seems to be okay. So obviously it gets a bit yellow, but I prefer to get it yellow than uh, to run away when it gets wet because it's painted with acryl. Stifte. All right. First coat done. Couple more to go. Second layer. So you know the drill, it took about eight coats and uh, this is the result. It's a bit yellowish, but uh, it's definitely well painted. I've used it and you can hardly see it. So no scratches on it, so that's super good. So now it's just a matter of maintaining it. I paint a layer every year and we should be good to go. Um, another job on the list is a thing that is also recurring every year and that is putting a little bit of Teflon on the stuff that needs to be operating in a smooth and non-squeaky way. So the next job is to kind of put some grease on all these things. I think it's quite intriguing that you make Something that you know is going to be outside and it rusts like this. Okay, what kind of quality is that? Anyway, let's uh, clean them. Ah. 
Having the sort of nice to haves out of the way, uh, it was time to do some should do's, but those that are like dreadful because you know what it takes to get it done. Haha, <laughs> it's out. So this was in between the impeller, which I serviced over there. And the inlet of the water and now the interesting thing is I put that in knowing that it might save me but it's clogged because there's a filter in it so this one I had about forgotten and to be quite honest that is not clean and the risk and then normally this isn't in but I put it in to help me find the impeller pieces if it would break. Well, I can tell you one thing, if it has to work this hard, it will break. So, uh... <laughs> so this is the filter and it's perfect for drinking water, but not on a hose with a 19 mil diameter. It kind of goes in here and comes out as a wee little hole. So there was quite a bit of pressure and now taking it out, I just wanted to connect the two hoses, but I found another hose that is long enough to do it all in one. So super happy with that. But as with any job, I basically had to tear the whole bloody place apart to be able to get to it. Cause there is the T and that wasn't easy, but uh, yeah, now putting it all back together and uh, hopefully then it runs with a new V-belt. So I add, added a new V-belt here, as you can see, a new impeller, which I added in there. So now it's just time to reconnect the lot and be happy with it. Yeah, I'd be happy with it, but not before you tested it, obviously. Oh, and then there was one more dreadful job. In that sense, I really would like to go electric, but okay. Uh, that was replacing some filters. The gasoline filter from the day tank to the engine and the oil filter. Replacing the fuel filter, there's the old one, and hopefully in, go, shit, goes the new, okay, that's a good lesson. I don't know what reason, but this is getting smaller by the minute, really. And because the ship is not moving like madness, we can actually work quite tranquilo and put in new gaskets in the lid and the big screw on top. I think it's interesting to see in daylight, it's not really dirty. It's not also super clean. So this obviously is from the dustbin, but happy I got this one out actually. I had a dreadful job the other day, changing the diesel filters, the gasoline. Today I'm going to change the oil in the engine. Another dreadful job. In that sense, I really don't like diesel engines. I mean, I love this one because it tends to always work, but replacing diesel fuel or oil is always messy. But uh, yeah, let's take you along and show you how I do it. First, make sure the oil is a little bit warm. So 
start the diesel let it run for just a bit getting everything out so you can feel the engine is warm now it's giving off heat i have everything ready so let's turn off the engine so we have a whole box of maintenance goodies the filter i had already replaced but I bought a new one, just a spare to have it with me. I love to have a spare of stuff. Uh, this is the actual oil filter with a handy bag you can use actually to put it in and then when you unscrew it, which I think is very attentive of the diesel doctor. And I have a spare one of that as well. And I bought two V belts uh, and a new impeller. So I'm ready to go. So let's set up the, the pump. The pump I bought at a little cheap, but the oil suction pump thingy actually served me well. Jammed a couple of times, but uh, should do its work when working with oil. So that's good. Let's get it connected. Connected to the deepest point of the engine, to the pump to the bottle, to the box with the power. And yes, this is a bit tight, but uh, all it has to do. seem to work like a charm. Next step is to replace the oil filter, which is nine out of 10 times an even more messier job. But let's give it a try with the bag. The guy said it would be a good idea to use it. So let's do it. First step is to get it loose, so to say. This is supposed to be one of the cleanest ways, but I can tell you it's not really 100% clean. In case you were wondering what I was using, by the way, this is very handy. It's if you can't open up the apple mousse or if you can't get the filter off, this thing actually works like a charm. Putting back the new filter, which is here, and I was just wondering, do you need to fill this with oil? So I looked it up on uh, a car forum and it said, well, basically because 9 out of 10 filters are positioned like this, mine is, it doesn't really make sense because everything runs out in a second, uh, which indeed I experienced as well, and it becomes quite a mess. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the seal that they do advise. And then from there, I'm going to screw it on, start the engine after I put back the oil in the engine and then have it run for a bit, uh, switch it off, wait five minutes for uh, all the oil to go down again, refill it, and then I should be fine. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to put oil in it. As you might see, the knob for filling the engine oil is below the wooden um, plank. But with the boat came a very nifty device. Oh. And that, let's clean it. Works like a charm. So, just put this like that. 
I'm going to fill her up. That was it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you have liked it, leave a like. And if you want to know more, I would say hit subscribe. I'm still preparing for a trip solo. Uh, so that is the good news. Uh, next episode will be about uh, making the boat ready for summer. And then we will, I will take you along on my first solo trip all the way to the Marka Wallen. So whatever happens, let's go. Hit subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Cheers, boys and girls. It's back. The man bun.